Hello, Rob. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good to see you. Thank you so much for applying for the role. Yep. Before we get into the interview, I would like to tell you a bit about myself and the company. So I'm a Salesforce developer and I work for a startup that develops an app. It's a unique app, helps our customers resolve their uh, accounting financial needs. We're growing very fast and we're looking for admin slash developer to supplement the team. I was very excited to see your application. Great. I think you might be a good fit for us. So can you tell me about yourself? Sure. Um, in my prior career, I worked in real estate development. I ran my own company and I did new single family houses and condominiums. Um, I was somewhat of a one man band in that uh, uh, I subcontracted all the people that did work for me. And I actually started using Salesforce about three years ago for my company. Um, initially, I started using it kind of as a data management tool. And then over time, I got a little bit more into Salesforce, started working with some of the uh, decorative customizations such as process builder, uh, validation rules, reports and dashboards. In 2019, um, I decided that I really wanted to pursue IT, especially Salesforce. So I began self-studying and working on uh, my certifications. And to date, I've gotten five Salesforce certifications, uh, the highest level being Platform Developer One. Great. Can you tell me about most you? Your most recent Salesforce experience, where do you sure. work right now? Sure, sure. So right now I'm at uh, GetForce and um, I've been there since the fall of 2019. I do contract work and that amounts to a, about an average of 60 hours a month. And that's why I'm pursuing um, uh, job opportunities because I'm looking for full-time work. So uh, one of the things I'm currently working on is um, building an app for a company in Southern California uh, that does cleaning of commercial buildings. And what's your role on that project? Um, doing a, a Salesforce admin work with a, a team of other people. Um, some of the tasks I've been involved in, uh, for one, um, on the opportunity object for the app, there are five stages, uh, the earliest being prospecting, the final stage being closed one. So um, depending on what stage the opportunity is in, I wrote uh, formulas for validation rules so that depending on the stage, uh, certain fields are going to be required. Um, and then also um, I've done a little bit of coding uh, on that app, um, I wrote, for example, an Apex trigger uh, in order to um, populate fields on a custom object, carrying them over from the opportunity object. Can you tell me about the trigger? Um, specifically how it worked? Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, there are uh, uh, various fields on the opportunity object that they also wanted on the custom object, which in this case was uh, uh, the property object. So um, let's see, there were about 30 fields um, on the opportunity object that they wanted automatically populated on the property object as well. Okay, okay. What are some other things that you've done on the project or for GetForce? Um, well, uh, another uh, app that I've worked on is um, an app I helped build for a property management company. And um, one of the things I did with that, um, I uh, built a lightning web component to show the location of uh, the property on a map. And um, I also uh, wrote a process so that 
at the end of the month, um, notices are automatically generated to tenants about an upcoming rent payment being due. Okay, okay, great. So how many years of Salesforce experience do you have, Rob? Well, um, kind of one plus. Uh, you know, I have been contracting for GetForce and, and doing all Salesforce work since the fall of uh, last year. And as I said, uh, three years ago, I started using Salesforce uh, for my um, real estate development company. I would like to ask you a couple of Salesforce admin questions. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the difference between a lookup relationship and a master detail relationship field? Okay. Um, well, one would use a, a master uh, detail relationship in um, the case where you wanted um, a summary field uh, on the parent object from the child object. Um, with a master detail relationship, um, if the uh, parent uh, object is deleted, that's going to delete the child object. Mm, that's what comes like to mind quickly. Um, yeah. What about the security aspects? What's the difference between lookup and master detail? Um, it sounds like what you're getting at, uh, is that related to, um, uh, such as the way you have, uh, profiles set up for particular users? Is that what you're no. getting at? No, no. Not. If, okay. If, a, if it's a massive detail relationship, the child record inherits the security of the parent. So right. that's what I thought you would talk gotcha. about. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Next question. What's the difference between the profile and permission set? <laughs> um, <laughs> great question. Uh, profile. <sighs> I don't think I'm going to be able to answer this well. I should know the answer to that. Okay. What do you do when you don't know or when you're stuck in Salesforce? Um, well, when I'm working on my own, I, you mean in terms of when I Google things that I need as a, a reference, a, re, a resource? If you're doing something and you're stuck, you don't know what to do. What do you do? Right. Uh, normally, the first thing I do is I search on the internet through Google. What are the common websites where you find answers? Um, quite often I find uh, answers through um, uh, Salesforce, either uh, their help pages or um, there's a, a developer forum on uh, Salesforce that has a lot of discussion about all sorts of different uh, problems. And that's another resource where I uh, if I research on the internet and I'm still stuck on something, I will often post a question to um, the developer forum or on a Stack Exchange. And, you know, fortunately, there are a lot of people on those forums who are very generous with their time. And I often get a response to my question the same day. Okay. What's the difference between record type and page layout? Um, Okay. I'm just trying to think this through because I've, I've obviously dealt with these things. Like for instance, um, uh, Recently, I had to create a, um, a custom uh, record type in a situation where um, there was uh, an object with a related object, and I wanted both um, items to appear on a report. So I had to create a custom record type um, for the object in which I was doing 
um, that report. When, when do you use record types? I have a feeling that I might know what uh, the information you're talking about, but I'm not sure what you're getting at. I'm, I'm sorry, you kind of have me stumped. So can you tell me quickly, what is the record type? Um, it's okay, we can go to the next question. Okay. Can you delete the user? No, you can only deactivate a user. Why can't you delete the user? Um, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe it's uh, as a way of, if there's something um, one needs to look up down the road in relation to that user, that exactly. way exactly. That the, the information isn't eliminated. Exactly. Similar question, can you, can you delete the field? Um, not a standard field. Okay. So can you delete the field? Uh, you can, you can, you can, you can obviously delete a custom field that you've uh, uh, created and you can um, make a, a field, if you want, not visible to um, uh, certain uh, profiles, as an example. What happens if you delete a field, say custom field? If you delete a custom field, um, in terms of is that information permanently erased? Oh, um, I believe that it's um, it's it's available for thirty days, if I remember correctly. Is that right? I think fifteen days. Fifteen days. Fifteen days. Yeah. What is the validation rule? Uh, a validation rule is. Um, a requirement you set up um, for uh, a particular field, um, like um, you might set up a validation rule that um, uh, the uh, answer, the numerical answer for that particular field um, has to be exactly um, a certain number of digits, otherwise an error will be thrown. Why and do we have validation rules? Why do you have vi validation rules? Well, it's so that um, uh, you make sure that uh, the user either doesn't uh, make uh, a careless mistake or um, leaves out information that's critical to the record. You're close, but not exactly. No cigar. <laughs> <laughs> the reason we have validation was to call control quality of the data that is being okay. entered. Yeah. Okay. So, for example, if there's an email, if the user enters an email, if it's a zip code, we actually get a zip code. Yeah. All right. Okay, those were like technical questions. I would like to ask now some scenario questions. Okay. I'm looking at an opportunity record in Salesforce. You know how typically in Salesforce on some records you can see the share button? You can share the record with another user. Are you aware, are we, are you aware of the share button? Um, I haven't used it. I'm assuming that that's something that one would control through sharing settings. Yes, yes. But I'm looking at the record and there's no share button. Why could be? Mm. Well, I would think that that's something that's either been set up in the profile or in uh, uh, permissions that's causing that to happen. Uh, so a bit close, but no cigar. It's, if the sharing settings is set to public read write, you don't see the share button on the record. Mm -hmm. All right, another question. Say I have a chief compliance officer at the company, and I would like that compliance officer to have access, view access to all Salesforce records. What's the easiest way to grant the chief compliance officer access to view all records in Salesforce? I studied that one a, a while back, but I don't remember what the answer is. The answer is that 
you look at the user's profile and there is a system permission called view all data. Mm. So if you give the user view all data, then he can view all data in Salesforce. Mm -hmm. uh, another scenario question. I, I created a custom object and I'm trying to create a report on the custom object, but one of the custom fields on the object is not showing up in my report. Why could it be? Um, okay, I'm assuming that this uh, th this field is showing up on the record when the user pulls up the record. Yes, but not on the. It's not showing up on the report that I'm trying to generate. You know, like reports that have available fields, you can add. That's a right. Column, but this field right, right for the up. columns for the yes. columns. No, I'm real curious about that because I haven't run into that. <laughs> the reason is that when you create a custom report type, you might not have added that field onto the page layout of the report custom of the report type. Okay. You can control which fields show up for the user. Mm -hmm. All right, that's it about questions for me. I mean, from me, do you have any questions for me? Um, yes, one thing I'd like to know is, uh, as far as, um, how the, uh, how the work is set up and the role that you're interviewing for, is it the type of role that's, um, uh, where, where the person's going to be working amongst a team? Yes, certainly. We have a team of developers and admins. And, uh... Yeah, we have a pretty mature company, mature, mature development team. Mm -hmm. And um, does the company use GitHub or uh, Bitbucket? We use GitHub. Mm -hmm. Why do you ask? Um, I have a decent amount of experience with GitHub, so oh, that's, that's good. good. <laughs> cool. Cool. Yeah. No, I don't have any other questions. Good. All right, Rob, thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure to speak to you and learn about your experience. I will, someone from HR will reach out to you about the next steps. Okay, thank you.